You gotta play my game! Small Brawl is probably the most unique title in the Twisted Metal series, enjoying a hellacious development cycle and interesting reputation following its release. One that I'll be exploring with former lead designer and art director David Goodrich. The other David of car combat games. I'll also be sharing my prior and current experience with Small Brawl that was recorded before I had any preconceived notion of getting this interview with David Goodrich. So I've kind of reformatted the video to include this interview. If you enjoy this, there will be a full interview up for channel members, but other than that, hope you enjoy the video. Twisted Metal Small Brawl is arguably the lowest rated game in the series by critics and fans. I jumped back into the series to find out why, because I actually remember liking it. But if you ask Sweet Tooth over here, he's probably gonna say it's fucking sh**. Oh man! It's no surprise that the Twisted Metal series has always been heavy on dark themes and dark humor. It's kind of in the name. So when Small Brawl came out as this bright and colorful game featuring kids and teens as the main characters, you can imagine why it was a bit surprising. To add to that, Small Brawl also came out right after the release of Twisted Metal Black, which was arguably the darkest that the series has ever gotten in tone. If you want to know more about Twisted Metal Black, you can check my retrospective out on it after this video. And everybody liked that, that direction quite a bit. And then what, three or four months later, a game comes out and it's it's cute kids with fireworks and it's aimed at a much younger audience. That's that's like having a bunch of Dark Souls and Elden Ring fans. And then all of a sudden Elden Ring releases like a kid friendly version with bright colors and ponies and, you know, rainbow swords. And Twisted Metal Black was also a next gen title at the time, taking advantage of the PS2's new hardware capabilities. This is important because despite the fact that Small Brawl was a newer release, it actually came out exclusively on the PlayStation 1, which was an older console at the time. The idea of releasing a newer game on older hardware right at the time of the newer console being released seems kind of like a bad idea, but it kind of made sense at the time. The reasonable explanation that was believed behind this was that if you were the older sibling or the parent in the household getting that shiny new PS2, you were going to be passing the PlayStation down to the younger sibling. Sony did some research and about two months into development, they said, well, we don't want to compete with Black. It's still doing well on PS2. And if we release it in the heels of Black, it's not going to do well. But then they also said that our players are aging out of auto combat, which was true. This was happening. We noticed this over, you know, at Activision with Visual 98. And they wanted to get the next generations of kids hooked on Twisted Metal. They found out through research that younger generation was getting the PS1 hand-me-downs from their older siblings who had PS2 and were playing Black. If you were the younger sibling, you can probably relate to this. If you were the older sibling passing down the PlayStation 1, you're probably the a**. Man, we don't want no system for no toy car. Yo, we want fat sound. Yeah, man. Fat that sound, about. baby. Just keep your shirts on. Twisted Metal Black just came out, but it may have been just a little too adult in nature for a kid to play. There was this great shot of him pushing this little, you know, five day old. So why not get him the newly released Twisted Metal Small Brawl to keep him busy? Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It seemed to work to some extent. I mean, Sony's plans to draw on the, the next generation, it worked. And, you know, all these people then after playing Small Brawl and kind of growing up with it are now checking out three and four and playing one and two. And Small Brawl may have been a T-rated game like the other Twisted Metal titles before it, but it was a much more lighthearted take on the series, which would have made it a perfect fit for a younger audience. I thought I was I was coming on to do the next black or, or adult themed Twisted Metal. And so I got up there and all of a sudden these ideas for a kid friendly version but I was a bit shocked like why are we doing a kid friendly version why are we doing this uh, you know RC cars I was trying to have the original adult characters who are so beat up from the original tournament like being gurneys and, and body cast and the only way they could continue to fight was to use RC cars from their hospital beds and let's not forget the PS2 was also backwards compatible so that kind of gave them the ability to double dip on sales of legacy players and early adopters of the new console all around, it was kind of a win-win. Or was it? Nice kitty. Nice kitty. Uh, mommy? Small Brawl released to mixed reception from fans and critics alike. Publications like IGN claimed that everything about this was a step back from the menu design to the gameplay, while other publications found it to be lukewarm at best. That being said, user reviews seemed to be fairly positive in contrast, so what gives? Well, 
tough. It turns out that Small Brawl was originally planned to be a PS2 game, so they had to scrap and repurpose assets during development. We were told uh, like two months into development that we had to down res to PS1, which was just like, oh crap. Like you don't do that during development. Like I had built a bunch of models and textures for the for the PS2 version. But that's not the worst part. We were told because you don't have an engine, we'll, we'll give you the Twisted Metal 2 engine to build Small Brawl with. And I was like, okay, this, this makes me feel a little bit better. Sony looked for the engine, Incognito looked for the engine, no one could find it. We actually had to build a brand new engine from scratch during development. And I felt like that probably cost us another several months of development time. Surprisingly, they didn't even have an engine to develop the game with. This led to a hellacious and short development time, having the studio hiring talent, training, and shipping a working product within a year. But given this information, what was my experience like with Small Brawl? Well, to get to the bottom of it, I gotta go back to how I first played the game. My experience with Small Brawl started with a demo disc. More specifically, it was the PlayStation Underground Fall 2001 demo disc, and it had a trailer for Small Brawl that I must have played a thousand times. The idea of little RC cars shooting rockets, machine guns, and tearing up the level seemed like a blast, especially to six-year-old me, or whatever age I was. It's kind of hard to remember that far back, believe it or not. F I'm getting old. Eventually, I got my hands on it, and after doing my pre-game ritual of making sure everything was perfectly in place for playing, I was sucked in. <laughs> Like the other Twisted Metal titles before it, Small Brawl's premise is pretty simple. You go through a series of levels in a Battle Royale style tournament to be the last one standing. If you make it, you get the grand prize of your character's deepest desire being granted, which may or may not come with its own consequences. The difference is, now instead of the combat being done in the cockpit of a car, it's being done via remote control toy cars with... <laughs> fireworks strapped to them. The staple characters of the series return, along with a shrunken remote control variant of their vehicles to accompany them. All your favorites like Agent 47 and the clown make an appearance here, as well as a few notable additions. You have a boss vehicle known as Trapper, a safari influenced vehicle that makes an appearance in the mini golf level during the tournament, as well as Piecemeal, a combination of all the other cars that were destroyed during the tournament, who is used as the final boss in the movie theater level. You have a few unlockables too, like Darkseid and Axel, who are hiding in certain spots of the levels. One oddball unlockable is a character named Mime, an obviously Herbie inspired car that beeps every time it's special is used, which is kind of Cute. The special is just a copy of piecemeals though, which is just cycling through all the other characters' abilities. I guess it was kind of an afterthought placed in at the last minute, but at least it's there, I guess. While we're on the subject of those unlockable characters, unfortunately, they don't really have an ending. The reasons for piecemeal, dark side, and mime not making an appearance could have been because of budget or time, but the same can't be said about Axel. An ending video for Axel actually exists. How this was found, I have no idea. But according to Goodrich Games, who I believe is the main developer on the series, it was cut by Sony due to it being a little too mean-spirited. So, how do I make him go? You don't. Yard work. A little too mean-spirited for a Twisted Metal title, yeah, okay. A lot of people assume it's because he's walking over a field of rakes and that wasn't it. That was my little thing that I slipped in there. I was a big Simpsons fan and they had a they had a gag with Sideshow Bob where he's got huge clown feet naturally and he's walking across like a, a field full of rakes to get somewhere. So I was just like, I thought that was super funny. I'm like, okay, we can lift this as kind of a nod to the Simpsons and stick it in there. It was a line where he said, Calypso, you said you could make me walk again. And it was just like, nope. <laughs> And see, that's the thing. Crude humor has always been a staple of the Twisted Metal series, and while it does exist in Small Brawl, it's very restrained in comparison to the other titles. Sony's higher-ups clearly wanted to push for a younger audience, despite the fact that this was a T-rated game, and that's made blatantly obvious in the endings here. You think I'm afraid of a, a, a silly Vata pistol? No, but she is. Dude, get off me! There's still that element of be careful what you wish for when it comes to the backhanded wishes that are being dished out by Calypso, but they're mostly campy and lighthearted. You'll go plenty fast, babe. Yikes! I wanna tighten that seatbelt, Twister! I remember loving Sweet Tooth's ending, and I gotta be honest, 
think it still holds up. You could have anything you wanted. And all you can think of is a little ice cream? <laughs> Let me go! Stop the car! The best ending, though, probably has to be Spectre's. I think he got the only good ending, where he ends up with this locket with a portrait of his dad with a key inside to his car. It's oddly wholesome, and I'm not really sure why Calypso gave him a break here, but I'd assume that if it was in black, he would have just buried him on the job site. I can live with this. The endings in Small Brawl are of course obtained by beating the tournament mode with any of the characters. The gameplay is pretty standard Twisted Metal fanfare, with your weapons being a machine gun and any number of missiles you obtain within the level. You still have turbo pickups for speed boosts that'll cancel out fire damage, and you still have your special abilities like freeze missiles and shields that are activated with a button combination like you're playing some kind of a fighting game. There's also your special ability of course, which will vary from character to character. I think that some of these special abilities are better than others, Slam can pick enemies up and throw them which is especially useful on certain maps and twister has a similar variant of this using a cyclone that'll pick up multiple cars if she picks up warthog and dark side as they're spinning around in her tornado if they bump into each other in that tornado they will cause each other damage extra damage on top of her special but then you have characters like outlaw where his lightning ability only affects one car at a time which i think is a little less desirable there's also sweet tooth ricochet ice cream bar which is a variant of the ricochet missile which is similar to trapper's ricochet special and axel fires a barrage of rockets which is similar to warthog's barrage of rockets because of the time constraints there was a lot of ricochet type weapons because we were just reusing the code over and over again i think like halfway through development because the the programmers were so entrenched on making the engine that i was told like don't come up with new specials and i would always kind of go in and trading horses a bit and be like well what if we use sweet tooth bounce but we add this or what if we took um specter's ghosts and we turned them into flaming paper airplanes instead and then you know change the seeking in the code i was looking at all the specials going can we take this piece from this special and this piece from this special combine them and then change the art will it feel different because we just have time to do special instances of code for everything like uh, you know for the weapons and stuff this feeling of sameness could have been remedied by the addition of uh i don't know like a flamethrower or something which funny enough apparently this is the only twisted metal title not to feature a flamethrower but i'm sure there was a good reason behind that one right hey twisted metal small brawl developers comment down in the comment section let me know if you could have programmed a flamethrower i just didn't think of a good flamethrower use someone actually brought up in chat one time like oh you could have used a sparkler and i was like well crap <laughs> a very noticeable difference with the gameplay in Small Brawl is that it's a hell of a lot easier than I remember. Especially off of coming from Twisted Metal Black, which was the polar opposite. I didn't lose a tournament a single time, because instead of carrying three lives throughout the entire tournament, which is how I think every other Twisted Metal title operates, this one gives you a fresh three lives every single level. I don't remember this being apparent in the other titles, but I could be wrong. What I can say is that I didn't have a problem wiping the floor with the computer opponents. And my poor friend that was generous enough to split screen with me for a little bit. That being said, I gotta give credit where credit's due with Small Brawl's opponents actually game ending each other. I just decided to let the game run with God Mode on and to my surprise, they will actually eliminate each other until only one is left, unlike the more superior titles before it. I don't allow AI to cheat. They have to play by the same rules as the player, so they'll fight each other, they'll damage each other. If they run out of weapons, they have to go pick them up. They don't have unlimited freezes and all that kind of nonsense. We did reduce the amount of damage they take from fighting each other and from environmentals. You know, we didn't want the player running off and, and hiding or just doing donuts around the environment as all the enemies killed themselves. They also used to, to suicide more. <laughs> we used to have ram damage with the environment in there. Like if you ran into a wall, you would take a little bit of damage, but we had to pull all of that out because the uh, AI kept killing themselves. They kept running in the walls. They would, they would come zipping around a corner with like a fraction of, like a tiny sliver of health and they'd bump a wall and just die. <laughs> it was like, all right, we need to take that out. So good on you guys for actually making the contestants compete with each other instead of it just being a 1v6 like the other more popular titles. Twisted Metal Black, more like Twisted Metal Bullshit. 
I think the gameplay is pretty fun otherwise though. It plays well and the main characters have enough variety in their special attacks to keep them interesting. When it comes to the boss characters, however, they're a little more out of reach. In order to get Trapper, you have to beat the game with every character twice. Once on medium difficulty and once on hard difficulty. Then you have to beat the tournament with Trapper on hard difficulty to unlock piecemeal, which obviously I'm just not going to spend the time doing. I'm just messing with you guys, I use cheats. Trapper has its own ricochet variant that's like a barrel of monkeys flinging out of the front bumper. Despite being similar to the others, it's probably the most unique variant and the sound effect that goes along with it is a nice touch. If you can stick with him long enough to beat the tournament again, that's when you'll get piecemeal. Or you could just play the game on Doug Station and then go to the cheats menu and select unlock all characters. Piecemeal is a bit interesting when you fight him in the late game. He's this very large vehicle that towers over you using the specials from every other character in the map. He's also the only enemy that's fought in stages, and I think this is the only enemy to do this in any twist of metal. Every time that you game end another opponent, the rest will morph into piecemeal, reappearing each time you take a card's worth of damage from him. Piecemeal is a completely unfinished boss. He was supposed to be like Devastator from the Transformers, where when you damage him, he would fall apart on the spot. You'd kill one piece of him, and then once you did that, he would reform back, like, right there. However, when it comes to playing as piecemeal, it's a bit more underwhelming. Piecemeal just doesn't have the same scale when he's being used, nor does he have the same health as the boss variant. This health variant also applies to Trapper. The funny thing about piecemeal is that he wasn't even planned to be the final boss. It was originally going to be another character in the universe named Minion, but Sony decided that it was too demonic for the lighthearted nature of the game, so... Piecemeal was pieced together at the last second. You guys like that? I put that one in the script because I thought it was funny. The same goes for other numerous other small changes in the game like the lamp and magazine and the Christmas level. We had a shotgun above the fireplace in the Christmas level also and they said no guns. Speaking of this Christmas level, it's obtained through surviving in the endurance mode where you'll also obtain the bowling alley level. These are maps that I actually don't remember playing in the game as a kid so it was almost like getting a little DLC for an old game that I haven't played in decades which is pretty neat. The bowling alley was actually pretty neat. Being able to knock over the pins with the cars while bowling balls traveled down the lanes really brought the level to life. I actually think the level design in general is where Small Brawl shines the most. After playing the gigantic levels of the Twisted Metal reboot and the fairly sizable levels of black, these bite-sized maps were a breath of fresh air. There's a surprising amount of environmental storytelling and easter eggs in the maps. There's plenty of destructible objects littered throughout the map with interactive elements that can spice up the gameplay like freezing play with the ice maker from the fridge and easy death oven or dropping players off of the platform in the treehouse map where you'll also have the ability to set off a box of fireworks for players crossing the bridge. As far as just arena base sized, those are PlayStation limitations. We couldn't make it that big and still have a lot of stuff in it. If you look at Gridiron Gore, while that one's a lot bigger, um, it's very empty. You can either have a lot of stuff to interact with and have a small level due to poly counts or you can have a big empty level. Like th those are kind of your choices there. I think it kind of worked in our advantage because if those levels were much bigger I don't think the action would have been as tight. I think this game just kind of brings out the fantasy of being an unsupervised child. You can level out the gym in a playground or set the kitchen island on fire by <laughs> shooting a rocket in the plumber's ass. These interactive elements really bring the level to life and play on the idea of toys with cards running around with real guns in a real life setting. <laughs> There's lots of little details that help the level stand out and make you feel the scale of the level. Looking back, I, I love the art style now. I, I see stuff in the game that I, I could never see before. There's debris coming off the um, kitchen counter in the kitchen when you blow it up. They're just small enough to get you in and out in a few minutes, but they have enough detail and verticality to keep them interesting. You can either have a lot of stuff to interact with and have a small level due to poly counts, or you can have a big empty level. Like th Those are kind of your choices there. I think it kind of worked in our advantage because of those levels were much bigger, I don't think the action would have been as tight. This Toy Story feeling of being a small thing in a big world always fascinated me and just worked my imagination in a way that none of the other titles did. I love games like Microvolts and Revolts for this reason. Not really sure why both of those games have Volt in the end of their names, but I guess because they're toys, whatever. The maps make me want to explore more. I want to go through the kitchen window or fly off the treehouse into other houses and explore more of the world. The skybox in the easy death oven level. 
Does that have the tree house outside of it? It does. It's a flat PNG card of it. But yes, that's, we had that idea and I wanted to carry it across all the levels, but during development, I think I thought of that idea a little late. I want to cause a bunch of mayhem and start leveling out buildings with the rocket strapped to my RC car. I don't know what it is about this scale that's just so interesting to me, but it gives my brain the good feelings. And I just think it's fucking sick. Any environment could easily be a small bra environment. We had plans for a bumper pool table at one point. It would have been great to do like more outdoor organic things too, but I don't think the PlayStation could have handled that. That being said, playing it today can show a few areas that the game just doesn't hold up so well. The game runs at a slower pace than the other titles and you don't dart across the map quite the same way as the others, which leads into a weird sense of gravity. If you ever go airborne, it almost feels like you're moving in slow motion at times, which can make the experience just a little bit clunky. If you played Twisted Metal Black before this one at the time, you probably noticed the frame rate because it's pretty damn bad here. I know that the other titles were probably running at a low frame rate too, but you can definitely feel what seems to be around 20 FPS in this title. It makes everything feel a bit sluggish and choppy, which is probably compounded by that slow paced gameplay. And if you try to play split screen, you can just forget about it because this just compounds the frame rate issue and it had me leaving with headaches by the end of it. The nostalgia in me is a little bit forgiving when it comes to the fluidity of it, but going back to some of these older PlayStation titles can definitely be a little crusty if you don't set your expectations expectations. <laughs> Fat enough. I love that the game gives me this abrupt congratulations screen anytime the game ends, but I can't really fault it for this one because I think every Twisted Metal title at the time did this. That being said, it definitely still feels like this was just rushed out the door a bit early. Yeah, so that's why I say it was probably more around seven or eight months to develop this because we lost months on basically down resing to PS1. We also couldn't find the Twisted Metal 2 engine hiring up the team. We also lost that last month there where we just locked everything down you can't add anything new to the game. QA's got to go at it and find everything they can. And if they if they find game-breaking bugs, then, then you can fix it. But other than that, no new features. Yeah, I want to say we lost a good four or five months of development due to all the, the hiccups here and there. It feels like there's a bit lacking here in the in-game content. It just seems like there should be a little bit more there in terms of unlockables like vehicles, weapon options, and most notably, endings. The payoff in a Twisted Metal title is most notably the ending, which the unlockable characters in this game don't even have. I think that Piecemeal could have made for an interesting character, but unfortunately he was just kind of left as an afterthought. There's also just straight up no animations or sound effects for when his special abilities are used, which is also the case for Mime outside of like a little child laugh. Well, Mime does the horn honking thing. <laughs> So I guess there's that, but Trapper probably could have had an interesting ending too, but I guess in the end, at least we got them as playable vehicles. In my opinion, Small Brawl's biggest strength is its cartoony small scale art style, but that could also be why a lot of people don't like it. You gotta remember that this came out at a time when Twisted Metal Black just got released. It's one of my favorites in the series, but I can understand why a lot of people might not share that sentiment. If something darker is more your speed, go check out my Twisted Metal Black retrospective. If you forgot that they released a modern Twisted Metal title over a decade, ago, you can go check out my Twisted Metal Reboot retrospective. And before we move on to mentioning our amazing channel members, I'm going to stop past you right now just to mention again that if you want the full interview with David Goodrich, it'll be up for channel members. That's my hammerhead design that I made for Small Brawl. That's crazy, man. The color and everything. You can even see the little shark on the side yeah. on the door there. We had an incredible conversation. There was a ton of information about Small Brawl that I just could not fit into this retrospective, as well as conversations about his other projects like Vigilante 8, True crime, Twisted Metal Black Online, and just a ton of stuff that he wants to talk about with Small Brawl that he hasn't yet. Speaking of which, he has his own channel where he goes into depth about every single character in the development process behind Small Brawl, which is incredible. He's got a ton of content over there that you will love if you love the Twisted Metal series or Small Brawl in general, and it's really worth checking out. So I encourage all of you guys to go at least check out his channel, and you can just get a wealth of information about the history of the game there. So uh, without further ado, Let's go ahead and close this up. And also a big thank you as always to my amazing channel members. XZ, not a clown too. Joking mom, Pearl Hurl butt, Scott, and Jose Berlay. Fun fact, we got about two months left in this studio before we move, so that's gonna be pretty interesting. We'll definitely have some channel member content there. But until next time, guys, have a go on. We could only have like a thousand polys per level um, due, to, due to being PS1 and, and, and engine constraints. So I think each of the cars was around, was like around a hundred polys. That's less than like a finger on modern day characters as far as poly counts go. <laughs> like.